Hey, it's Sam making a tutorial on how to create and add animations to your Minecraft Bedrock Edition or Pocket Edition entities, however you guys like to call these. Let me show you an example of what I mean. So this is an entity I created and I made an animation for when it's idle, so when it's not moving or doing anything. I also added an animation for when it starts walking. So once it starts walking, it uses a different animation. Also added one for when it starts swimming. So as soon as it goes into the water, it uses the swimming animation. And I also added an animation for when it's attacking. So here it just raises its arm. And before showing you how to do this, so, uh, there's something I want to mention, and that is that I don't usually create models or animations. So, uh, so I'm just going to be explaining the very basics of how to how to create your animation. And the other thing is that I was going to divide this into two different videos, but I decided to make it into one video. So the first part of this video is just how to create your animation. So if you already know how to create animations, you can just skip it. And the second part is how to add it into your entity. So if you guys just want to skip to that part, I'll leave all the times in the description. And let me show you how all of this is done. And first, I'm going to show you what applications I'm going to be using. So the first application is Blockbridge. I'm going to be using this to create the animation and to add the animation to your entity. I'm going to be using Bridge V2. If you guys don't know how to download and use both of these applications, I already made a video about this. I'll leave a link for that in the description. And both of these applications work on a mobile device or on a computer. So it doesn't matter what device you're using. You can use these on any device. And for me, I'm going to be, and I'm going to be doing this on a mobile device, but I am going to be using a mouse and a keyboard. If you guys are doing this on a mobile device, I would recommend connecting a mouse and a keyboard. This will make things a lot easier. Uh, so first, let me show you how to create your animation. So you just have to open up Blockbench. So once you have Blockbench open, the first thing I want to mention is if you go to this heading, this might be down here on the left side. Here you want to make sure you create a group or a bone, however you guys like to call these for your for every part of your entity that you want to give an animation to. So here I created a group that contains all the other groups and the cubes that belong to, to this entity. That way I can move the whole entity or give it rotation or change its scale. And I also created a group for every part of my entity. So I made one for the head, for the left and right arm, same for the legs, the left and the right. And each one of these groups contains each cube that belongs to this part of the entity and you also want to make sure you adjust the pivot points for every part of your group because the groups and the cubes have a different pivot point so you may you want to make sure you also adjust them for these once you've done all that to create your animation you want to go up here at the top right where it says enemy and here you get a few different options like i said these options might be at the bottom or on the left side and if you go to this setting here this will show you every part of your entity that you could give an animation to like i said this will not show the individual cubes just the groups and to create your animation you want to select this setting here and select the circle with the cross and this will let you create create a new animation so first you just want to give it a name and for all animations first it has this name which is just animation then the name of your entity this is going to be different for you and then here where it says new you want to delete this and give your animation a name so for me first i'm going to be making a walk animation so i'm just going to call it walk or walking whatever you want to call this uh, just select the name that will let you know what this what this animation is going to be used for and then you want to select the loop mode so here you get three different options you could just have the animation play one so it's just going to play once and go back to the original position that it started in the second option is to hold it on the last room so, so it's just going to play the animation and then stay in the same position that the animation ended and for the last option is so it can loop so it's just going to keep repeating over and over so for me i'm going to be making a walking animation and i want it to keep looping while it's walking so i'm just going to select this option and the rest of these options don't really matter so here i'm just going to hit confirm and to edit your animation, you want to go down here and select this option. And this will show you a timeline. Here you could adjust how long your animation is going to last. So if I move this line here and I set it here where it says 0 0.5, this will make my animation last half a second. And if I move it over here where this one is, this will make it last one second. Or this will also just adjust itself whenever you add a keyframe. So I'm just going to set this back to 0. Same with this line. And to create your animation, first you just want to select what part of your entity you want to add animation to. So first I'm going to start with this arm. And when this animation starts, I want this arm to be a bit forward. So I'm going to select this rotating tool. And I'm just going to move the arm wherever I want this uh, entity to start the animation. So I'm just going to move it to this position. And what this also did is it added a keyframe. And what this keyframe does is it lets it know that it, when it's at second zero, uh, this arm has to be in this position. And another way that you could add the keyframes is you could also just uh, go here and you could add a keyframe for the rotation, the position, or the scale. So you could just click on these if you wanted to. Uh, but right now it just changed the rotation. So I'm just going to select this keyframe over here. And another option that you get is if you select this option here, you could also input a specific number for the x the y or the c uh, so here i'm just gonna change it a little bit and set this to negative 45 this is just another way that you could do it you don't have to do it like this this is just another option that you have so here i'm just gonna go back to the timeline and then what i'm gonna do next is just move this a bit forward so whenever it reaches half a second i want this arm to be back so i'm just gonna rotate it again and and just change its position to wherever i want it to be 
And if I play the animation now, this is how it's going to look. And the reason it looks a little weird right now is because it's looping. Uh, so whenever the animation starts, uh, the arm starts in this position and then reaches half a second, it goes to this position. And once it reaches here, it automatically goes back to zero. That's why it looks a little bit weird. So one way that you can fix this is just going a little bit forward again. And if you're making a looping animation, I would recommend making it start and end it in the exact same position. That will make it loop a lot better. So here I'm just going to move the arm back to the position that it started in and if I play the animation now this is how it's gonna look so it looks a lot better now. and another way that you could do this uh, first I'm gonna do what I just did so I'm gonna remove the ski frame one way that you could do that is uh, using these arrows so you could undo and redo here so I'm, just, so I'm just gonna undo that so the other option that you have is that you could also copy the keyframe so, so here I'm just gonna select the first keyframe and copy it and then wherever this blue line is this is where it's gonna paste so here I'm just gonna uh, move this at the end of the animation and I'm just gonna hold it and paste it here so now this keyframe and these keyframes are the exact same. So if I play it now, this looks a lot better. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing, but for the other arm. So I'm going to move this line back to zero. And for me, I want this, when this arm is forward, I want this one to be backwards. So here I'm just going to select this arm. And since this one is forward, I'm going to move this one. So here I'm just going to rotate this one back. Same thing again, I'm just going to move this a little bit forward. And then when this arm is back, I want this one to be forward. So I'm just going to select it and rotate it towards the front. And then to have a loop, I'm going to copy the first keyframe and then just copy it at the end. So I'm just going to paste it here. And this is how my animation is looking right now. And I'm also going to do the exact same thing for the feet, but this part I'm just going to fast forward. And this is the animation I made. And you guys can keep adding more detail to your animation. But like I said, I, I'm not very good at making animations. So I'm just going to show you the very basics. But you could also have like the head move. So for mine, I'm going to have the head of this entity move back and forth. Uh, but like I said, that's up to you. It depends how much animation you want to add to yours. And I'm just going to leave mine like this. Uh, but let me show you how you can add another animation. To create another animation, just repeat the same steps again. You select this option right here and you select the circle with the plus sign. And here first, you just want to give your animation a name. So just change it here where it says new. And, and for this next animation, I'm going to make an animation for when it's idle, when it's not moving or doing anything. So I'm just going to call it idle, but you guys can call it whatever you want. And for the loop mode, I want this to keep on looping. So I'm just going to select this option here. And then I'm just going to hit confirm and same thing again uh, to edit the animation. Just go select this option here. And for this animation, since this, since this is going to be for when it's not doing anything, I'm just going to have it move its arms a little bit. So I'm going to set this line back at zero. And for this animation, when the animation starts, I want it to have its arms a little bit open. So I'm just going to move it like this and I'm just going to move it a little bit forward. And once it reaches this point, I'm, I'm going to have it close its arm. And since this is looping, I'm also just going to copy the first keyframe and paste it at the end. And this is how it's going to be moving. Like I said, this is just for when it's idle. And you guys could animate this however you like, but I'm also going to do the exact same thing for the other arm. So I'm just going to fast forward this. And this is how my animation looks. You guys can keep animating this however you like. And for the next example, I'm going to make an animation for when it's attacking. So I'm just going to select this option and create a new animation. And here I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to call it attack. But you guys can call this whatever you want, attack or attacking or anything that just helps you know what this animation is for. And for the loop mode, I'm just going to have it play once since I only want it to play when it's attacking. So I'm just going to click confirm. Then I'm going to edit the animation. So I go back to this setting and set this back to zero. And for the attacking animation, the way I'm going to have my, en my entity attack is just uh, have it raise its arms so first i want it to start in this position so, so here i'm just going to add the keyframes for the rotation position and scale and the attack animations are really fast so here i'm just going to move it a little bit forward not too much then i'm going to have it raise its arms so in here i'm just going to change its rotation have it raise its arm uh, so this is how it's going to look when it attacks and another thing that you could do is that you could copy an animation and paste it on a different part of the entity uh, to do that since this arm is going to have the same animation as this one i could just copy it so what i'm going to do here is select all, all of these keyframes if you're doing this on a computer you could just hold control and select all of these or you could just drag your mouse and select them and if you're doing this on a mobile device, what you can do is that you can go down here where, where it shows this small keyboard and sell, click this box where it says control. Once you, once you have that activated, it will be the same thing as holding control on your keyboard. So here I'm just going to select every keyframe I want to copy. And here I selected all of these. And then once you have them selected, what you can do is just hold it and then click copy. And then you just select what part of your entity you want to copy it to. So here I'm just going to select this arm. And then I'm, I'm just going to hold here and it's going to allow me to paste it. Uh, so now this arm has the exact same animation as this one. So if I play it now, this is how it looks.
And that's just another way to do it. You don't have to do it like that. That's another way that you can have the same animation on two different parts of your entity. And if this animation is too fast, what you could do is just move this a little bit forward and it will go a little bit slower. But like I said, uh, tech animations are really fast, so you don't want to make it too long. And for the last example, I'm going to make an animation for when it's swimming. So same thing again, I just select this option and create a new animation. And here I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to call it swimming or swim or whatever you guys want to call it. And for the loop mode, I want it to keep looping. So I'm just going to select loop and then just hit confirm. And since this is going to be a swimming animation, uh, first I want to change my entity so so it's laying down. So what I'm going to do is select this option here and select this group that contains all of my cubes. I'm going to change the rotation of my whole entity. So here I'm just going to move it and I'm going to have it laying down and I'm also going to adjust it so it gets centered. So this is how it's going to start when this when the swimming animation starts. And then I'm going to edit the animation. So I'm going to go back here. And for this one, all I'm going to do is have it move its arm and its legs. So I'm just going to fast forward this. And this is how it's going to look when it's swimming. But you guys could uh, animate it however you guys like. And that's all the animations that I'm going to be creating. So here I made an animation for when it's walking. One for when it's idle. So when it's not moving. And when it's attacking and one for when it's swimming and you guys could keep creating as many animations as you, as you guys like uh, but for me this, these are the animations that i'm going to add to my entity for now uh, so the first thing i would recommend doing is going up here where it says file and saving your project make sure you save your project that way you don't lose any of your progress especially if you're doing this on a mobile device uh, but to export your animations what you want to do is go up here where it says animation and click here where it says save all animations and this will instantly download it if you're on a mobile device if you're on a computer it will ask you to just save it on any folder just remember where you save it and if you're on a mobile device this will be in your downloads folder and now let me show you how to add these animations to your entity and to add your animation to your entity i'm going to be using bridge v2 and, and here i already added my entity into this project like it, but like i said if you guys don't know how to do that i already made a video about that i'll leave a link for that in the description before i show you how to add the animations to your entity there's a setting i'm going to change for bridge v2 something that was causing me a lot of issues so the setting that i'm going to be switching is bridge prediction this one just predicts if you're trying to add an object or a value uh, but i had a lot of issues when i was using that so i'm i'm just gonna switch it so here i'm gonna go to project and go to settings and then go here where it says editor and here it says bridge predictions uh, i'm gonna make sure that this is uh, disabled make sure you disable this or else you might have a lot of issues like i was having and once you disable that now you will get three options one is to add an object to add a value or just to edit so here like i said i already added my entity into my project uh, so if i go here on this row which is the behavior pack and this one this file in here where it says entities this is the file that controls the behavior of my entity and if i go into the resource pack uh, here there's a few other files that we're going to need but the first thing we want to do is import the animations we just created so today you just want to go here where it says file and then open file and if you're doing this on a computer just uh, look for whatever folder you saved your animations to and if you're doing this on a mobile device you might need a file explorer so here i'm just going to use this one this one already came with my device so i'm just going to select it and like I said, mine downloaded to my downloads folder. Your, yours should be in this same folder too. And here you just select the animations you just saved. So this is the animation I just created. First, it has the name of my entity. And then it says animation. So I know that this is the file that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to click on it. And then when you do that, you get two options. You can either save it to your project or just open it. And here you just want to save it to your project. And then you just want to click here where it says confirm. Once you do that, inside of the resource packs, it's going to add this folder that's called animations. And it's also going to add this file. This is the file that contains all your animations and it already opened it. So if I open up this file, uh, here's the animation for when it's walking, when it's idle, when it's attacking and when it's swimming. Now we can just close this file. We're not going to need it. And to add the animations to your entity, what you want to do it inside of your resource pack, you want to go here where it says entity. And if you did this using Bridge V2, Bridge automatically created this folder called entity. And it also created this entity file for your entity. Uh, so here, this is the entity I want to add the animations to. So I'm just going to select it. And inside of this file, this file controls a lot of things. So it tells the game what materials your entity is going to use, what texture it uses. So if I open this up, here it specifies what texture it's going to be using. It also tells it what geometry it's going to use and a few other things. Uh, but to add your animations to your entity, you want to go here where it says description and go here where it says add object. And, and here you want to search for animations and you just want to click on this one. Uh, with this one selected, you want to go down here and first you want to give it a short name for your animation so if you did this right bridge should suggest a short name for your animation so for the first one i'm just going to add a, the walking animation so i'm just going to click on this one and then go here where it says add value and select the animation that that corresponds to this one so 
uh, for like I said, the animations for first they have this name, which is animation, then the name of your entity, and then the name of your animation. Uh, so for the walk animation, this is the one that I'm going to be using. And you want to do this for the rest of the animation. So here I'm just going to add the idle animation. So first the short name, then the animation. So this one that's called idle. Same for the attacking. And here I'm just going to select the attacking animation. And for and the last one is the swimming animations. I'm just going to select it here. Once you've done that, then the animations are already added to your entity, but, but we still haven't specified when they're going to start uh, playing. So to do that, we could use an animation controller. And first, I would just recommend saving your file so you don't lose any progress. So just go up here where it says file and then save file. Then to create an animation controller, you just want to go here where these three dots are at and you want to click new file. And then you want to go here where it says simple file. And here you want to select this one that says client animation controller. And then just give it a name. You could call it whatever you want. Here I'm just going to call it mob once. And that way I know this is the controller for my entity. But you guys can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to click here where it says create. And this all, and inside of the resource pack, this created an animation controllers folder. And inside of here, uh, your animation controller. And for now, I'm going to close this because I want to open both of these files at the same time. And if you guys don't know how to open two files at the same time, you can just uh, go 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 to the file that you want to open. And you want to click these three dots. And here it gives you the options to open it in split screen. You don't have to do it like this. I'm just doing this so I could explain a little bit better. So this is the entity file and this is the animation controller. Once you have the animation controller open, you want to go here where it says animation controller and here you want to change this name so here it says controller animation and then blank uh, so you just want to change it here where it says blank and just give it a name and for me i'm just going to give it the name for my mob so i just called mine mob one but you can call this whatever you want and the way that animation controllers work is that it uses different states to specify what animations to use so if i go here where it says states uh, it already has one called default but i'm going to change the name of this one and change it to idle uh, this is the state that my entity is going to be in when it's not moving or doing anything. And here is this initial state. This is the state that your entity is going to start from. So here right now it's set to default, but I want to change it to idle. I'm also going to change the name to idle. When my entity first spawns in, it's going to go into this state, which is idle. And for each state, there's a few things that you could that you could add to them. So if I select this state right here, which is idle, uh, if I go here, it says add object. Here you can specify what animations it's going to be playing while it's in this state. So uh, if I click here, it says animations. Here I could specify what animation it's going to be using while it's in the idle state. Uh, so here I'm just going to select the idle animation. And this name right here is making a reference to, to the animation we added to our entity, which is this one. So when it's in the idle state, it's going to be playing this animation. And since I also made a walking animation, I'm also going to make a walking walking state. So I'm going to select states again and go here where it says set object. And in here, I'm just going to add a walking state or you can call this whatever you want, walk or walking or anything you like. And same thing again, you also want to specify what animation it's going to be using while it's in the walking state. So here I'm going to select animations. And here I'm just going to select the walk animation that I that I created. So I'm just going to select this one. And like I said, this one is this it's making a reference to this. So it's going to be playing this animation once when it's walking. And we already added two different states, uh, but we still haven't specified how it's going to be making a transition from idle to walking. Like I said, first, where it says initial state, we made it so it starts in the idle state. So as soon as your entity starts, it's going to start on in this state. And the way we switch from idle to walking is using a transition. So we select this idle state. And here where it says add object, we add this we add this one that says transitions. With this one selected, we choose what state we want to transition into. And we want to transition into to this walking state. So to do that, uh, we go here where it says add object and, we, and here we type the name of the state that we want to transition into so here it's called walking or whatever you named it just make sure it's spelled exactly the same so here i'm just going to type in walking and when to detect when it's walking what we can do is go here where it says add value and here we can use a mole inquiry to detect when the entity starts walking and most of these have a name that kind of explains what they're detecting but if you don't know what any of these do what you can do is go to this website and this is the website bedrock.dev and once you're here you want to go here where it says molang and then you just want to scroll down and here you get a list of all the entity queries that you can use to detect when the mob is doing a specific thing so for example if you wanted to detect when your entity is moving you can use this query which is query the ground speed and here you'll get a description of what this is detecting and there's a lot of things that you could detect using these queries there's too many of them to explain what each one of them does so you guys could just go to this website and, and just read what each one of these does so like i said here when we want to detect when it's walking we can use this query which is query ground speed 
uh, this will detect when your entity is moving. Once it detects that it's moving, it's going to switch into the walking state, which is this one. And we also want to make it so when your entity stops walking, it switches back to the idle state. That way it doesn't play the walk animation while it's not moving. Uh, so to do that, we do something very similar. So we go here where it says walking, and then we also want to add a transition. So we select the one that says transitions. And here we want to switch it back to the idle state. So here I'm just going to type the same name that's up here. So I'm just going to call it idle. And here we also want to use a query to detect when it's not moving. So what you could do is use this same query to detect when it stops moving. To do that first, you add this symbol and then you add the query, which is query ground speed. So having this symbol here, it's going to detect when it's not moving. And once it detects that it's not moving, it's going to go back to the idle state. And that's all you have to do to switch between these. And now I'm going to add a state for when it's swimming. So for now, I'm just going to close these to make it a little bit less confusing. Uh, so I'm going to go here where it says states again. And here I'm going to add a state for when it's swimming. So here I'm just going to type in swimming. And same thing again, I'm going to specify what animation is going to use. So I'm going to click here where it says animations. And here it says add value. I'm going to use, I'm going to have it play the swimming animation when it's in this state. And like I said, this one is the same one as over here, so the one called swimming. And we also want to add a transition so it switches to swimming whenever it's, whenever it starts swimming. So to do that, we go here where it says idle and go here again where it says transitions. And here we just want to add another object with the swimming state. Uh, so here I'm just going to type in swimming. Make sure that the name you type here is exactly the same one as this one. And to detect when it's swimming, we're also going to use a query. And the query that we're going to use to detect when it's swimming, uh, here we just type in this query dot is swimming. This detects when it's swimming. Once it detects that it's swimming, it's going to switch into this state, which is this one right here. And same thing again, we also want to make a transition for when it stops swimming. So it goes back to the idle state. So same thing again, go here where it says swimming. And here at, at a transition and here I'm just going to call it idle since I want it to go back to the idle state whenever it's not doing anything, whenever it's moving. And to detect when it's not swimming, same thing again. First you use this symbol and then use the query. So for me it's query dot is swimming. So having the symbol here will detect when it stops swimming. Once you've added that, this will make it so when it stops swimming, it goes back to the idle state. And the last one I'm going to be adding is for when it's attacking. So first I'm going to create an attacking state. So I'm going to select this one that says state and create a new state, which is attacking or attack or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it attacking and then select what animations you want to be playing whenever it's in this state. So here I'm going to select animations and go here where it says add value. And here I'm just going to select the attack animation, which is this one over here. And then I'm going to go back here to the idle state and I also want to add a transition so it switches to, to the attacking state. Whenever it's attacking to do that, you go here where it says transitions, you go here where it says add object and give it the same name that you named your attacking state, so I called it attacking. And the way that I'm going to be detecting when to switch to the attacking state is using this variable, which is variable, the has underscore target so this first one is going to detect when it when the entity has a target that it's going to attack and then we're going to use two of these symbols and then space and we also want to detect when the the attack time so to do that you do variable dot, dot attack underscore time then space and then do the zero pointing towards the right and then equal sign and then 0 0.1 and to switch to the attacking state, it has to detect two different things. The first one is that it has a, that it has a target. And the second thing that it's going to detect is that the attack time is greater than or equal to 0 0.1. Once it detects both of these things, then it's going to switch to the attack state. And once it does that, we also want to add a way to switch back to the idle state. To do that, I'm going to select this one, this, the attacking state. And here, here I'm going to add a transition. And here I want it to transition back to the idle state. So here I'm just going to type in idle. And to go back to the idle state, I, I want to detect when the attack time is less than or equal to zero. So to do that, you do variable the attack underscore time is less than or equal to 0, 0.0. So as soon as it detects the, that the attack time is less than or equal to 0, 0.0, it's going to go back into the idle state. And the last thing I'm going to be doing is that I'm also going to be adding a transition for when it's walking so it can switch to when it's swimming. And, and you also want to make sure you add a transition for when it's walking so it can switch to attacking and same thing for the swimming. So, so it could also make a transition for, for when it's attacking. And I'm just going to be using these exact same variables, but I'm just going to fast forward this part. And the last thing we want to do is add your animation controller to your entity file. So to do that, it's very simple. The first thing you want to do is save this file. So go up here where it says file and then save file. 
Once you do that, you want to go back to your entity file here. And, and here you want to go where it says animations. And here you want to add for one for your animation controller. So you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it controller. And for this one, the value that you want to give it is the same name that, I, that you selected here. And if you did this right, Bridge should suggest it for you here. Uh, but if it's not suggested in here, just type in the exact same name you typed in here. So this is the one I chose. So controller, animation, and then the name I gave, which is the name of my entity, which is just mob1. And this added the animation controller to your entity file. And the next thing you want to do is have this one active all, all the time. So to do that, you want to go up here in your entity file where it says description and go to add object. Just look for this one that's called scripts. And with this one selected, here you want to go where it says add object and select this one that says enemy. For the value here, you want to type in this one, which whatever you called it here, I called it controller. So here it shows up for me. So I'm just going to select it. But it, if it doesn't show up for you here, just type in the exact same name you gave it here. So I called it controller. So this is the name I gave it here. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Then just go to file and then save file and all the animations should be working now. And the last thing I want to mention is if you go back into your behavior pack, which will be this red one right here. Uh, if you go into your entities folder and here, this is the file that controls the behavior of your entity. So if I open up this file and this is where you could add the components and the thing I wanted to mention is that some of the animations will not work if, if they don't have uh, some specific components added to them. So if you guys don't know what components to add into your entity, you can just copy the same ones that I added to my entity. And like I said, I will leave a link for my project for this project in the description so you guys could download it and you guys just see how I made my entity. Uh, but just as an example here, if I go here where it says navigation generic, uh, here I made it so my entity is amphibious so it could go in on land or on water. And I also, and here I specified that it is able to swim uh so if you don't add this your entity will probably not use the swimming animation i also specified that it can walk and a few other things uh but like i said if you guys just want to check it out i'll the link for this is in the description and that's pretty much it if you guys have any issues or any questions just let me know